Mr. Standard, please come forward. Uh, please face the clerk, raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Smesto. Can we say your name for the record, please? Sally Standard. How do you spell your last name? S-T-A-N-D-A-E-R-T. -E and uh, what do you do for a living? I'm employed with the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office as an investigator. And how long have you been in law enforcement? 22 years. Um, what are your general duties as an investigator with the uh, Sheriff's Department? Um, I investigate sensitive crimes, drug crimes, crimes against children, um, burglaries, homicides. Were you asked to assist in the investigation of the uh, Apple River stabbings back in uh, July of uh, 2022? I was. Um, were you given specific duties or assignments? Yes. Uh, specifically, were you asked to collect some DNA samples? Yes. Um, do you recall whose DNA you collected? I collected um, Alexander Martin's, uh, Riley Madison's, and Dante Carlson. Um, what kind of uh, collection method did you use? Uh, we use a buckle swab, which looks similar to a one-sided Q-tip. Um, we collect the, we use that Q-tip on the inside of the cheek to collect a sample from there. Are the uh, swabs uh, sterilized or come in sterile packaging uh, when you're using them for this collection? They do. Um, do you recall when you took the, the, the buckle swab from A.J. Martin, was that here or at his home or somewhere else? At his home. Um, what day was that, if you remember what date? September 1st, 2022. Uh, did you drive over to his house? I did. Collected the swab? I did. What did you do with the swab after uh, you collected it from him? Um, I packaged it, logged it in um, our computer system, and then placed it into evidence at the sheriff's office. Um, did you collect a, a, the same type of buckle swab from uh, Riley Madison, uh, Tony Carlson, and Dante Carlson? Um, from Riley and Dante, I did, and then Investigator Shields collected it from Anthony. Where was that done? Here at the government center. Did you use the same process with Riley and Dante? I did. Um, what did you do with those swabs once they were collected? I packaged them, logged them into evidence, and placed them in the evidence room at the sheriff's office. Uh, were you present when uh, Investigator Schultz took Anthony Carlson's buckle swab? I was. Did you? Did that, what happened to that swab? I also packaged that one and logged it. Do you remember the day that that happened? September 2nd, 2022. When you say you place them in evidence, is that a secure facility at the sheriff's office? Yes. And were they kept in that secure facility until transported? To my knowledge, yes. Where were they transported to? Uh, the state crime lab. Uh, were you involved in that? No. Not that I recall that I was there. Is it possible you were involved in that? I could have been. Was, that, was it quite a while ago? Yes. <clears throat> Is there another Sally Standard who works for the Sheriff's Office? No. If the crime lab paperwork says that the samples are dropped off by a Sally Standard, would that have been you? Yes. Yes, you may. Investigator, I'm showing you what's been marked in Exhibit 64. Can you identify that? Um, it appears to be the property and ever evidence summary from the case number 2022-6400. Is that the this case that we're here for? Yes. Um, did you, as you log in evidence, 
and specifically these buckle swabs, is there a number assigned uh, for that evidence? There is. An item number, I guess it's called? There is an item number, yes. I'm referring you to the, I guess, the bottom of page five and the top of page six. Do you see uh, the entries for the buckle swabs that you collected, uh, September 1st and 2nd? Yes. Um, can you just tell us the numbers for the swabs that you entered into evidence? Um, 257, 258, 259, and 260. I don't have any other questions. Mr. Officer? Just very few. Um, so, investigator, when you get the buckles, and I think you said you got them on September 1st and September 2nd. Correct. Okay. Um, you log them into evidence, right? I do. Okay. And when are they transported to the crime lab? Uh, at the date that they were transported? I don't know. Do anything with, I understand you package this, the evidence, right? Correct. Do you do anything with the DNA evidence, meaning do you refrigerate it? What do you do with it? Once the buckle swab is collected, it's placed in an evidence box and then also in a bag. The label is placed on that and it's placed in evidence. There's no refrigeration that happened with that when I placed it into evidence. I'm sorry, did you, you said there was no refrigeration? Is that what you said? When I place it into evidence, it's in a locker. Okay. And in this particular case, not being critical, you don't know how long it's there before it's transferred? Correct. I'm not the evidence technician. Okay. Do you transfer it? Do you drive the evidence to the crime lab? We can at times. Um, we may go with the evidence technician. You don't have a recollection of that in this case? I don't. Do you have that exhibit in front of you? Can I just take a peek at it? Sure. And to be fair, the information on here doesn't say who transferred it or when, right? Not on that form, no. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Smastad, anything else? Nothing further. All right. Thank you, investigator. You can step down. Who is the next witness? Ms. Hoffman, uh, please come forward. Keep coming. Right down the middle. That's good. Uh, please face the clerk. Raise your right hand. She'll administer the oath. Yes. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Smesta. Are we please state your name for the record? Ashley Hoffman. Um, were you formally... With a different last name? Yes, Ashley Price is my maiden name. And what's your occupation? I'm a nurse. Um, what kind of nurse are you? A uh, forensic nurse examiner for SART. And then my full time job is I'm an OB nurse manager. What is SART? SART Sexual Assault Response Team. Is that something affiliated with St. Croix County? Um, yes, we cover St. Croix County, Polk County, Barron County, Russ County. It's a community resource. All right. Um, 
Can you briefly describe your education uh, that led you to your job as a nurse? Yes. Um, specifically for forensic nurse examiner, I take a 40 hour didactic training, um, which is where they kind of teach you how to perform medical forensic examinations. Um, and then I also did a two day hands on skills um, education with Hennepin County for their heart, which is Hennepin assault response team. Uh, do you have a bachelor's degree in nursing? Yes. From where? University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Trying to can approach the witness. Yes, you may. And I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 57, and I'll ask if you recognize that document. Yes, I do. Can you tell us what it is? It is my CV for nursing with my experience. And what's a CV? A uh, CV is just a document that lays out different experiences for how long I was with different organizations. Your Honor, I move for the admission of Exhibits 57. Any objection? Okay. 57 is received. Now, you, you've testified that you are involved in a number of different roles in your job. Yes. Um, I want to specifically talk to you about your position as a, what you call a SART nurse. What are you asked to do as a SART nurse? Yes, so uh, typically we do forensic examinations on sexual assault victims. Um, it also spans across to suspects of assault cases, um, including sexual assault, homicides, anything where evidence collection would need to be done. Uh, does part of your duties include uh, responding to the St. Clair County Jail when requested to examine folks in the jail? Yes. Um, do you recall July 30th of 2022? Yes, I do. Um, were you on duty that day? Yes, I was. Uh, is, a SART, is a SART nurse on call or do you have specific hours or how does that work? We do on call hours. All right. Um, did you get called to the uh, St. Clair County Jail that day? Yes, I did. Do you remember what time? It was around dinner time. I was sitting down to eat dinner. All right. Uh, did you go to the jail? Yes, I did. What were you asked to do? I was asked to collect evidence on a um, homicide suspect as part of your duties do you perform did you do you typically get asked to perform an examination of someone who uh, may or may or may have been involved in a homicide case it can happen um, certainly we typically do sexual assault cases um, but yes it can happen and on this day were you specifically asked to do an examination of a, of a homicide suspect yes and I should change my verbiage a little bit I was asked to do a examination on a suspect um, that had stabbed five people. You, you, you had that information when you yes, went to the jail? Yes, correct. Um, one of the things that you do as part of your examination is you prepare a written report. Do you, yes. Do you prepare a report? Yes. Yes, you may. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 55. Do you recognize that? Yes, I do. Can you tell us what it is? This is our suspect evidence collection examination form. Is that the report you filled out on your examination with Nikolai Mew? Correct. <clears throat> Can you briefly describe what type of examination you do in this, in this context? Yes. Um, so generally, whenever I first arrive, I speak with law enforcement and kind of get a brief description of why I'm there, why I've been asked to be called and collect evidence. Um, they briefly tell me a little bit about what happened. I meet with the suspects. Um, and then I'm, it's kind of a templated form where I go through a bunch of questions, just asking um, general medical history um, if they have a twin um, just different questions that might point me into what type of evidence there might be, um, how I would collect it, if there's any scars, if there's any injuries. I do a full head-to-toe assessment of the suspect and document any findings. Um, I do take photographs. Um, typically, I get consent at the beginning of these examinations. If I do not get consent, um, generally we'll go with a warrant if there is one that is issued that lays out exactly what I would be looking for. Uh, do you remember if Mr. Mew consented to the examination? Yes. There is a signed consent form in here on, I believe, 
one of the things that you do as part of your examination is to is it to inquire as to whether the suspect has specific injuries uh, to direct you to? Yes. Yep. So I go through and I ask different questions. Um, I take what law enforcement has given me and then I take what the suspect tells me a little bit about. If I notice anything that I have not been told about, I will ask a question. Oh, how did you get this injury? Um, just to kind of point me to what I'm seeing and where that might have come from. Um, with regard to medical history, uh, did Mr. Mew uh, tell you anything that you noted as significant in his medical or surgical history? Yes, he had had a coronary artery bypass graft in 2021. He told you it was in 2021? Yes. Did you have any medical data to support that date? No. <clears throat> you took his height and weight? Correct. Uh, how tall was he when you examined him? Um, 69 inches tall. What do you weigh? 248 pounds. <clears throat> um, Mr. Mew reported some uh, injuries to you that he took that you made note of on page four. Pardon me, page five. Near the top? Yes. What did he report as being the, uh, the injuries? He reported getting hit in the back of the head and in the back. Um, did not have any pain when I was talking with him. The only pain is um, was on his butt from hitting the stones on the river. Did he report any kind of injury to his ears? He had reported that someone told him there was blood on his ear. Um, part of my examination, I do look in the ears with an otoscope, and I did not note, it, note anything um, worth mentioning. No injuries or anything like that. Did you see any blood in his ear? No, not at that time. Did he report which ear he supposedly had blood from? If you know, or did you check both ears? I checked both ears, um, but I do not remember which ear specifically. Uh, down at the, towards the bottom of page five, there's a category that indicates statements made by a suspect during the exam. Yes. Um, did you fill that part out? Yes, I did. What kind of statements did uh, Mr. Mew make to you during the exam? One statement was, there were about seven people on top of me, hitting me in the back of the head and on the back. I don't know with what. A second statement made was, they just attacked me. They called me a child rapist. A third statement made was a guy pulled a knife on me. I took his wrist and turned it into his belly. <clears throat> um, in the, when he was reporting his injuries to you, did he make any mention of being struck in the face? If you recall? Um, I do not recall directly. Did he make any mention of being strangled? Not to my recollection. Right, and if he had, would you have noted that? Yes. Uh, did you examine his neck and throat area? Yes. Did you find anything uh, that would indicate that he had been strangled? No, not that I have noted. You examined his face? Yes. Did you see any bruising or cuts? That you... I noted a two centimeter by one centimeter abrasion to his um, posterior head, so the back of the head. How about his face? Did you notice anything to his face? Uh, nothing to the outside of his face. On the inside of his left cheek, there was an abrasion. All right. On the outside of his face, did you see any puffiness or swelling? No, not that I recall. Any red marks of any kind? No, not that I recall. Okay. Um, you did talk about um, an abrasion to the inside of his cheek. Did he tell you how that happened? Yes. What did Said, he tell you? I bit it when I was attacked. Um, with regard to the abrasion on the back of his head, is that at the top of his head or at the lower part of his head? It's at the base All right. of and his the, skull. Was his hair covering it, if you know? I do not recall. Where I have it drawn is kind of right where that hairline would be. All right. And did he tell you how he received the abrasion to the back of his head? Yes. He said, I was hit back there. All right. Did you note any swellings or bleeding on the back of his head? No. Uh, 
um, at some point, did you examine the side of his head? Yes, I did examine the right side of his head. Did you note any injuries? No. Did he make a statement with regard to what injury he thought he had to the side of his head? Yes. Um, to the right side, he stated, I was hit on the side of the head. Did you make a, or examine his hands? Yes. Um, did you note um, anything of concern uh, with his hands? There were scattered abrasions on his knuckles um, of his right hand. Was there anything on his left hand? Not that I have noted. Uh, did you also uh, examine his, his back? Yes. Did you, what did you find when you examined his back? He had about six different um, injuries that I noted. Um, starting from the upper back, he had a couple of linear abrasions um, that were red in color, as well as um, a seven centimeter by eight centimeter abrasion on his lower back on the right side. Did you notice any bruising on his back? No, not that I have noted. And I, I, just to make sure, what, what time of day did you complete your exam? Is it, is it included on your report? Yes, it is included on page three. Time was 21.03, so 9.03 p.m. Understood. Did you take some photos um, during your examination of the uh, injuries that you just noted? Yes, I did. Your Honor, well, I can approach. Yes. <clears throat> First off, I'm going to show you what's in Mark Exhibit 56. Do you recognize that? Yes, I do. Yes, this first image is a photo identification card um, stating my name is the photographer who the law enforcement was involved, date of the photos, um, and patient name and patient birth date. And is the rest of the exhibit the photo that you took? Yes. And then the last page, what is that? Or is that just a duplicate of the first, of the first page? The last page, I take a picture of the photo identification card at the beginning as well as at the end. All right. On your photo identification card, are you keeping your former maiden name? Correct. Um, your Honor, I'm going to ask for admission for Exhibit 56 and ask permission to publish to the jury. Any objection to 56, the photos? No. Did, did you publish 55 as well yet? Or? No. Uh, 55 has not been offered. Okay. So 56 is received. Go ahead and publish. Well, Your Honor, I will offer 55, which is a report, but I wasn't intending to publish it. Any objection to it being received as evidence? Okay. All right, 55 is received. We're going to publish digitally here, so if you give us a second. We're ready. All right, Nurse Hoffman, is this the photo identification card you referred to? Yes. Um, page two, you show us what that is? Tell us what that is. Yes, I do a profile um, image of the suspect so that um, we know whose photos these belong to. All right, and this is a photo of his face and upper torso? Correct. And as you noted earlier, uh, photo does the photo show any injuries to his face? Objection. Agreed. Sustained. Uh, moving on to the page three, what's that a photo of? That is a distant photo of the back. All right. Did 
Mr. Mew make any comments as to how he got the abrasions on his back, do you remember? No, none that I have noted. All right, did he, all right, we'll move on. Page four, tell us what that is. That is an up close abrasion injury to the upper back on the right side. All right, uh, photo five, page five, what's that? Um, that is a measurement of that abrasion that I have noted on the upper right back. And what was the, go back, what was the? Two centimeter the, linear abrasion. All right, next page. What's that? Um, that is a photo of more abrasions to the left side, or to the right side um, of the first noted abrasion with measurements as well. So that was a one centimeter linear, linear abrasion. And that's what the next photo shows? This yes, photo here? correct. All right, move on one more. What's, what is this? I guess it's listed as image 251. That is um, an up close photo of an injury further to the right side. All right, what, what type of injury is that? It is an abrasion. And then next slide. Is this you again measuring it? Correct. And how, how one, big was it? One centimeter. <clears throat> the next photo, can you tell us what that is? Yes, that is an abrasion further down on the upper right side of the back. Uh, next photo, can you tell us what that is? That is a more up close photo of the same injury. All right, is that one also measured? Correct. That is a measurement uh, three point five centimeter linear abrasion. All right, and the next photo. What does this show? So that would be a picture, a distant picture of the abrasions, a little bit further, kind of mid back on the right side. All right. Next photo. It's a more up close image of the same injury. Understood. You measured that as well? Correct. And this uh, photo that you're looking at now, does that show the measurements? Yes, they were two um, 0.5 centimeter abrasions. This next photo, is that a, tell us what that is. That is um, a red and linear abrasion on the lower right part of the hip. Uh, and then this next photo, is that a close-up of that same abrasion? Correct. You measured that as well? Yes, that's measured shown, that as well. That's shown in the following photo? Correct. Uh, what, were the, what were the measurements for that abrasion? Seven centimeter by eight centimeter. Um, did you take a couple measurements of that uh, particular abrasion? Correct. That's what this, does this photo show the second measurement of that abrasion? Yes. And then last page, that's what you had described earlier as being the after photo of the identification card. Correct. Is that all of the photos that you took? Yes. As you're examining Mr. Mew, was he interacting with you, talking with you? Yes, he was answering any questions that I had. Did, do you remember what his demeanor was? He was very cooperative. All right. Did he show any signs of being under distress? Not what at that it? time that I can remember. Uh, did you take his pulse? Yes. And do you remember what it was? Pulse was 91. <clears throat> um, as you were interacting with him, did you observe any indications that uh, he was under the influence of any drugs or alcohol? Not that I can recall. Right. You, did you draw any blood? I did not. <clears throat> Uh, 
While you were doing your examination, did Mr. Mew complain of any pain in his ear? <coughs> Not that I can recall. Did you take any samples uh, from Mr. Mew? Did you take samples from Mr. Mew during your examination? Yes. What kind of samples did you take? Um, I took a couple of different um, collection swabs on fingernails. Um, we do a buckle swab, so that is in the inside of the cheek, and that collects um, suspect DNA, so we have something to reference, as well as skin-to-skin -skin contact swabs, so that would be on the hands. Um, that is all the swabs that I collected on him. Right. Did you do any swabs of his back at all, if you remember? Um, not that I can remember. Right. Uh, what did you do with um, all this material that you gathered? I mean, I mean, your report, your, the photos, the swabs, the samples? Yep, the evidence samples, we package up, we seal them. Um, seal them in an evidence box, and then that gets handed over to law enforcement as part of chain of custody. Did you do that? Yes. Do you remember which officer you gave the uh, materials to? Brandy Hart. Your Honor, I'll move for the admission of 56 if it hasn't already been admitted, and I don't have any other questions for her. I believe 56 was received as well as 55. Mr. Nelson. You're a nurse examiner. Yes. Um, and you come and examine people when you're asked, correct? Correct. Sometimes those people are uh, alleged victims, correct? Yes. Sometimes those people are alleged suspects, correct? Yes. Sometimes those people might be both, correct? Yes. When you um, examine, you do that by asking questions, correct? Yes. And then you gather information by listening to the answers, correct? Yes. And then you do an examination with your eyes as well, correct? Yes. And then you note what you observe, correct? Yes. So essentially, exhibit number 55 uh, notes what you heard, correct? Yes. And what you saw, correct? Yes. Um, when you, um, oftentimes, most of the time, I'm guessing you're dealing with uh, people who, as it says on here, uh, are sexual assault victims, correct? Yes. Um, I would imagine that you've dealt with, uh, you consider that to be a person who's a victim of assault, correct? Yes. And I would imagine there's times when you've dealt with uh, people who are victims of an attempted assault, correct? Yes. There's certainly times when somebody comes in and they said, somebody was trying to assault me and attack me and I fended them off, correct? Yes. I defended myself in some way, correct? Yes. You would still do an examination, correct? Yes. You would agree that person's still a victim of assault, correct? Yes. Whether that assault is completed or not completed, they're still a victim, correct? Yes. Um, and in that sense, you deal with these victims of violence, correct? Yes. And, and you would agree that um, victims of violence often suffer physical injury, correct? Yes. But also psychological trauma. Yes. They're victims of trauma, correct? Correct. And I would imagine you have a lot of training and experience in dealing with pick people who are in the acute phase of dealing with some trauma that they've suffered, correct? Yes. And it maybe changes over time how that shows, correct? Yes. I would imagine you've seen some people within minutes, if not within an hour, of the trauma that they've suffered, right? Yes. And then you've seen some people maybe a 24 hours or later, correct? Yes. And how people, the signs that they might show of that trauma might depend upon when you see them on that time continuum, correct? Yes. As somebody is uh, closer in time to the event, their trauma might be more acute, correct? Yes. And as somebody, uh, time goes on, that might be harder for you to observe, correct? Yes. Because obviously a lot of the psychological trauma is internal, correct? Yes. You're noting physical injuries, right? Correct. But it's hard for you to know what's going inside 
going on inside that person's brain or body, right? Yes, unless they tell me. Unless they tell me, correct? And I would imagine sometimes in those positions, people who are victims of violence, uh, victim suffering from trauma, they may not be in the best time to fully disclose the trauma that they've just suffered, correct? Correct. One of the things that I'm sure you're trained on is, is how to get that information from somebody, correct? Correct. Because sometimes that's difficult to do when the person has just suffered some life-altering trauma, correct? Yes. Um, and it's not unusual for you in your experience to know that these victims of violence may not be in the best position to tell you things right away, right? Correct. Because the trauma, it impacts that person, correct? Yes. It impacts their, how their body functions, right? Correct. And in fact, in here, you took a pulse of Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. And his resting heart rate was 91, correct? Correct. You would agree that that's elevated, correct? I, it depends on the person. Some people do have more elevated resting heart rates. Um, so I would not, at this first meeting, be able to determine if that was elevated or not, um, as I had not received any other medical history about Mr. Mew. Sure. You're a nurse, though, right? Yep. You've taken people's heart rates quite a bit, correct? Yes. Would you agree that a uh, resting heart rate of 91 for a 52-year-old male is outside the normal range of what you would expect for a resting heart rate? Yes. It's elevated, correct? Yes, slightly. Um, so there's other things that might happen to a victim of trauma to their body, correct? Yes. Um, the one thing, again, that you were, you, you were able to measure is heart rate. That's all, correct? Correct. You, you could, and again, I'm just trying to figure out what you did. Mm -hmm. You could take blood pressure, correct? Yes. Is that something you did? Yes. Uh, was that elevated as well? Blood pressure was 144 over 97, okay. which, yes, is elevated. Um, then again, some people can have more elevated blood pressures sure. normally. But yes, that would be more elevated than I would normally see. Uh, other than those two measurements, did you do any other measurements of his body? Not height and weight, but just like internal measurements, so to speak. Yes. So I collected a full set of vital signs. So that includes that pulse, that blood pressure, um, respiratory rate, which was 18 at that time, and temperature 98.2 Fahrenheit. And you, and you would agree that uh, respiratory rate is, again, same thing, a bit elevated. Agreed? 18 is within normal limits for an okay. adult. So other things that might be happening inside a person's body that they're a victim of trauma, you can't always measure, correct? Correct. You know through your training and experience that sometimes somebody who suffers violence upon them, they might have an adrenaline rush, correct? Correct. And after that adrenaline rush, their body might dump all kinds of chemicals into them, correct? Correct. And that might have an impact on them, correct? Yes. What you see sometimes for victims of trauma is sometimes that those victims may have a foggy mind, correct? Yes. May not have the best memory, correct? Correct. Or even if they have the memory, they may not be in the best position to retrieve that memory. Correct. Or they, even if they can retrieve the memory, they may not be in the best position to disclose that memory, correct? Correct. Sometimes those, the violence done upon somebody might be so impactful that they're just not in a position to talk about it, correct? Yes. And you certainly know sometimes that people who are victims of violence, they also might just get the, uh, inaccurately report the violence that was done to them, correct? Sometimes, yes, correct. Yep, because if violence is being done to a person, that's obviously a high-stress situation, correct? Yes. And that might impact their memory of the event, correct? Yes. And this is all things that you've dealt with when you've dealt with people who are victims of violence, correct? Yes. And the same holds true even if that person, thankfully, was able to fight off the assault being done to them, correct? Your Honor, is the speculation foundation facts, not evidence. I'm asking her in general. Overruled. Would you agree? Yes. Um, and what you're doing and you're examining is you're, again, trying to gather facts, correct? Yes. Because sometimes those facts might tell a story, correct? Correct. Because ultimately, 
part of what you're here to do is to say, figure out what happened, correct? Yes. I would imagine it's unusual in your world for you to be able to have a video of actually what happened, correct? Correct. So um, you don't know when you're doing these examinations whether there's going to be some other evidence that might tell the story, correct? Correct. And so you're, again, just collecting the facts because we might not have that video, right? Yes. I want to go through some of the things that you did in this case. Um, just going to jump ahead for a second before we get into this. One of the things you said is you take a medical history, right? Yes. And the medical history that you received is that Mr. Mew had had, a, I think of it as quadruple bypass. Is there another term that you used? Yes, coronary artery bypass graft. Okay. Um, and you made observations of Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. You saw his chest, correct? Yes. He certainly had a scar consistent with the surgery that he said to you that he had done, had done to him, correct? Yes. Um, and one of the things that you said you ask about is whether somebody or not has a twin brother, correct? Correct. Because that's important for some of the DNA analysis, correct? Yes. And you learned that Mr. Mew, in fact, has a twin brother, correct? Yes, a fraternal twin. Correct. Okay. Um, I want to go through a little bit then Exhibit 55, and I'm just going to go through some different pages here, okay? Okay. And on page four, I want to go through, start there. Make, that makes sense? Yes. The handwriting there, that's your handwriting, agreed? Yes. And you wrote those things down because that's what somebody told you, correct? Correct. Um, so like when you report here, suspect, you're talking about Mr. Mew, correct? Yes. Depending upon the view, it could be an alleged victim too, agreed? Agreed. So can we just replace that with his actual name? Does that make sense? Yes. Um, Mr. Mew reports he was being attacked Bystander noted blood coming out of suspect's left ear. You agree? Yes. Um, are you aware of the video evidence showing him getting hit upon his left ear? No, not at that time. Um, and then it notes, uh, Mr. Mew notes uh, he washed the ear off in the river, correct? Correct. And of course, on your form, there's a note that says, post-incident actions, did somebody take a bath or a shower, correct? Correct. And here you put no, but you noted incident happened in the river, correct? Yes. It's noteworthy to know that water was a part of this, correct? Correct. Because water could impact the ability for the evidence to stick around for your collection. Lack of a better phrase? Agree? Correct. Including blood, correct? Yes. On page five, you note, again, replacing with his name, Mr. Mew reports getting hit in the back of the head and in the back. You agree with that? Yes. He said uh, at that point there was no pain, uh, only pain uh, on his butt from hitting the stones on the river, correct? Correct. Did you ask him some follow-up questions about how it is that he came to be falling into the river? I did not. Did you ask him some follow-up questions to, to see the amount of force that was used against him to fall into the river? No, I did not. Um, and then on the bottom of page five, uh, you note some other statements by Mr. Mew. Is that right? Yes. And uh, he said, there were about seven people on top of me hitting me in the back of the head and on the back. He said that, correct? Correct. Um, he said that he did not know with what they were hitting him, correct? Correct. Um, and again, that's not unusual in your experience for a victim of violence to not know what it is that they're getting hit with, correct? Correct. Uh, certainly, if they're getting hit from the backside, they would just feel the impact, correct? Correct. Whether the impact is with an uh, open hand or a closed hand, it's just an amount of force that comes there, correct? Correct. And uh, at the end of the day, an open hand can cause force just like a closed hand can cause force, correct? Correct. 
Um, Mr. Mew uh, also stated um, they attacked me and called me a child rapist, right? Yes. And then lastly, you noted, just so we're um, inclusive here, he also said uh, a guy pulled a knife on me. I took his wrist and turned it uh, into his belly, correct? Correct. He was, in those statements, fair to say in summary, he said he was attacked, right? Yes. And then on page six, um, you have uh, there's uh, pictures of heads, correct? Yes. And that's, again, uh, looking at the front, the back, the left, and the right side of a person's head, correct? Correct. So we'll just note, we're just going to go through that, if, if I could. Yes. And actually uh, <coughs> publish that. Do you have that page there in front of you? Yes. Trade with you so I can use the actual exhibit. Permission to publish the exhibit, Judge? Yes. We're on page six. Okay. Looks like it's on. <laughs> So on the top there, uh, on the upper left-hand corner, it asks the questions, injury noted, and you say yes. Correct. And then it asks to give a description, and you say an abrasion to the inside of the left cheek, correct? Correct. Um, obviously, uh, you don't know how that happened, correct? Correct. It's not unusual in your world for victims of violence to note that they have an injury, correct? Correct. And then they might <coughs> give an uh they might have a specific memory, and sometimes they might just use deduction to try to determine how it is that they got that injury, correct? Correct. Um, sometimes they're accurate, agreed? Yes. Sometimes they're inaccurate, correct? Sure, yes. Um, and what he noted is he, uh, I bit it when I was attacked, correct? Correct. You didn't ask follow-up questions to say, did you bite it when someone was punching you in the left side of your face? No. You didn't ask that follow-up question? No, I did not. Again, and it sounds critical. I didn't mean it to be that way. It's just you're asking a question, you get an answer, and then you kind of move on, correct? Correct. At that point, I would imagine you're, there's a fine line between being too uh, invasive. Would that be fair to say? Yes. You want to be uh, respectful of somebody who may be a victim of assault, correct? Correct. You're not going to cross-examine them in that setting, correct? Correct. I'm not going to follow up with multiple questions to make them relive the trauma, correct? Correct. You're going to ask one simple question, correct? Correct. And then you're going to note whatever they say. Yes. And then uh, moving to the right as we go along, we're looking at the back of the head, and you, again, you noted injuries, correct? Yes. And that was uh, an abrasion to the posterior head, and you had a measurement of two centimeters plus one centimeter, agreed? Correct. You noted that with your eyes, correct? Yes. Um, and then you asked the one simple question, and Mr. Mew said, I was hit back there. Agreed? Yes. Maybe that he was hit by a person, correct? Correct. Maybe that he actually hit his head uh, on, a, on the ground or something else, some other object that would have could have caused that injury. Agreed? Yes. Um, moving uh, to the bottom of the page. Um, yes, I thought there was enough room. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, the bottom of the page, we're looking at the left side of uh, Mr. Mew's face. Is that right? Correct. And what he told you is that he, uh, a witness, somebody else, had observed blood in his ear, correct? Yes. And this is, again, I think you said before he had said, he heard that, and he washed it off in the river and looked, and he didn't observe it, correct? Correct. And that's what you note essentially there, correct? Yes. Um, and then on the next one to the, other, to the right, right, you ask if you observed any injuries, and you didn't, correct? Correct. You note that he says, I was hit on the side of the head, correct? Yes. So he's 
mentioning he's hit to the head multiple times. Fair to say? Or to the back of the head, to the right of the Correct. head, and maybe on the something causing him to bite his cheek on the left side of his head. Correct. And then as we move on to page number seven, you do a kind of a full body scan to some degree, correct? Yes. Um, and on the back of the body, you made some observations, is that right? Correct. And you note those observations then uh, by making a mark on the back where you saw that with your eyes, correct? Yes. And then you went through and took photographs of those areas, correct? Correct. And that's the photos that we saw here, correct? Yes. The photos that you took of Mr. Mew were photos of where you made observations of injuries, correct? Correct. Um, also, if a person in that situation told you, I have an injury in a particular place and you didn't observe it with your eyes, you'd still take a photo, correct? Correct. Because at the end of the day, it's not necessarily what you observe. It's like maybe somebody else sees it and I don't, correct? Yes. Typically, I only take photos of things that I'm measuring, seeing, so I can describe them appropriately. Sure. But if somebody told you, I got hit in a particular place and I feel pain in a particular place, you might try to document that one way or the other, correct? Yes. Even if you don't see it, you'd want to document it. What you see on that day, correct? Correct. And what yes. the best way to document that is to take a photograph, correct? Yes. Typically, if I do not see it, I will document it on the form. I will not necessarily take a photo of it. Sure. In this case, you took a photo of Mr. Mew's face, correct? Correct. And again, that photo in the background, we see the time is at about 920, correct? Yes. And so if uh, the 911 call was at 345 or so in the afternoon, this is more than five hours after this alleged event, correct? Correct. So five hours after whatever trauma it was that Mr. Mew said that he'd been the victim of, correct? Correct. And that might impact what state in that trauma he is going through. Agreed? Agreed. That's all. Mr. Smestad? Um, first off, thank you. you were asking questions about elevated uh, blood pressure and elevated pulse. Does having a heart bypass cause folks who survive that procedure to have a higher pulse and blood pressure in general, if you know? Um, that's not my specialty. It certainly can. Um, generally, a normal pulse is 60 to 90. And Mr. Mew, it was noted to be 91, so just slightly elevated. Um, a general blood pressure, um, typically heart patients have higher blood pressures, especially when they're on medications. Um, however, it's hard to know if that's typical for heart patients or not because they're so different. He was on some medications, right? Yes, it looks like he was on atorvastatin, aspirin, and potassium. Atorvastatin is uh, what type of med? Uh, it's a med for cholesterol. Is, the, is that prescribed to folks who have high cholesterol? Yes, typically. Does high cholesterol affect your blood pressure, or can it? It certainly can. Again, <clears throat> that's not my specialty. Um, Mr. Nelson had asked you about whether Mr. Mew has a twin communicated fraternal twin? Correct. Do fraternal twins have the same DNA? If not typically. That's not my specialty either, but. Understood. Um, Mr. Nelson had asked you about Mr. Mew's statement to you that, quote, the guy pulled a knife on me, I took his wrist and turned it into his belly. Uh, was that something that he volunteered or was that in response to a question from you, if you remember? Um, I don't recall exactly where that statement came from. Um, I do know when I was observing the injuries on his knuckles, I did note a couple of statements um, when I asked him how he got those injuries. I was trying to stop my tube. These happened maybe when they kicked me. Um, I, I don't know if it was around then. I know I was examining his hands. I don't know if it was when I was swabbing them or noting the injuries when that statement was made. All right. Oh, 
Did you end up taking any photos of his hands? I did not. Do, do you know why? I do not. I wish I would have, but I, I didn't. Um, you indicated that um, as you're examining Mr. Mew, he indicated that uh, he had been kicked? Correct. When you were examining Mr. Mew, other than the, the bite on the inside of his cheek, did he complain of any pain in his face? No. Right. Nothing further. Mr. Nelson? Just want to make sure we've got, I think, three brief areas here. One of them is medications. He talked sure. to you about medications, correct? Yes. Did he tell you uh, at that time, do you have not any knowledge that at that time he was being prescribed uh, Prozoin? No. Are you familiar with Prozoin? Um, no, not particularly. Okay. Medication to deal with uh, PTSD nightmares? Okay. Did he tell you I... at that point he was b using that medication? No. Medications are something that a doctor has to give, correct? Correct. So you can't just go out and ask for some prescription and you get it, correct? Correct. He so asked about medication. Hold on. Please come up. <clears throat> Uh, next question, Mr. Nelson. Thank you, Judge. Um, <clears throat> uh, you were asking questions about what he disclosed about pain. I want to follow up on that, okay? Okay. And in your experience dealing with victims of violence, uh, it, in your experience, sometimes the pain is acute at that time, correct? Correct. And sometimes the pain might come later, correct? Correct. And some of that might be because of the body's response to the trauma that they suffered, correct? Correct. The body might be doing things to to protect them from feeling that pain in that moment, correct? Yes. And the pain might come later, correct? Yep. Not unusual in your world, agreed? Agreed. Uh, and then lastly, you said he made some statements to you. He made some statements in general about what happened, correct? Yes. And then he made some specific statements about the manner in which he thinks it happened, correct? Correct. Um, but what we know is in his general statements to you were, I've been a victim of violence, correct? Correct. Somebody attacked me, correct? Correct. Ask an answer, Judge. We've been down this road. Assisting. That's all. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hoffman. You are finished. You may step down. Thank you. Uh, please see the witness coordinator in the back. She'll tell you where to go next. 